Hello my fellow Christian fiction lovers, welcome to another video. Today I am going to be sharing a book with you that I really didn't enjoy. In fact, I am DNFing this book and it has been over a year since I've DNFed a book. I tend to try and stick it out to the end, but I'm just really not feeling it with this novel, so I'm going to share with you why, especially because this is a book that I had higher expectations for based on the reviews and other opinions I had seen about it, like circulating online. And yeah, it's it's a book that I think people are going to talk about in the Christian fiction world that I just want to share my opinion about because there are going to be lots of different opinions about this book and mine is just one of them. So I'm not saying I am right or wrong. As always, I don't set the mandate for what you have to think about a book. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's get into it. <laughs> so the book we're talking about today is Shadows in the Mind's Eye by January Tromp. This is a new novel. This is actually her debut novel. And I read the description of this book quite a few months ago and immediately pre-ordered it because I just fell in love with the concept of the story and I, I thought I was going to end up falling in love with the actualization of the concept. And that has not ended up happening. So, Shadows in the Mind's Eye follows two characters, a young couple uh, directly after World War II. The husband, Sam, is just returning home from having fought in World War II. And it is basically about how they must basically figure out life together with his struggles of PTSD. But of course, in what was it, the 1940s, 50s, uh, nobody calls it PTSD. Well, I can't actually find the exact year this is set in, but right after World War II ends. And of course, my brain is not <laughs> reminding me what year that was. But anyway, that aside, that is what this book is about. And I thought it was going to be a beautiful portrayal of uh, love and the endurance of love and uh, patience as Annie and Sam have to kind of muddle through a lot of uncertainty and have to kind of rebuild parts of their relationship. Sam also has to rebuild relationships with uh, members of his immediate family. He has to get to know his uh, three-year-old daughter and reunite with his friends. I mean, a lot changes after one goes to war and goes through the traumatic events of war. The way that his friends and family dealt with him coming home from war was terrible. And while terrible reactions can be written into books and used to further the story, I think that can be a great device, actually. Like, you have to have bad reactions and you have to have characters make bad decisions to continue furthering a plot. Um, I'm not saying that that was the bad thing. The bad thing with how this device was used in this book is that it's portrayed as those characters their feelings and their reactions were okay. And again, I am only speaking as having read 180 pages out of 275. So I read basically two thirds of this book. I don't know how it ends. Later on down the road, I might pick it up and try and read it again. But these are just my thoughts on the two thirds that I read. So do take some of this with a grain of salt, considering I don't know the ending. And I don't really care to know the ending. But I felt that Annie's reaction, um, Sam's best friend's reaction, his brother and his mother, they all treated him terribly considering what he had just gone through and they didn't take into consideration he was unsure of how to live life again and he came home to a family that was almost scared of him and skeptical of every move he made and every thought he presented to them, they shut down and kind of treated him like he was a crazy person. Annie, specifically his wife, she is the other main character in this book. She basically from the get-go is of him coming home. She is skeptical of him and she just, she goes back and forth between thinking, yes, we can make this work and oh, I can never, like, it can never be the same again, and basically kind of just giving up on their marriage, and and then she goes back to like, no, we can fix this, and it's going to be fine. 
and she's just very back and forth and she can't solidify her thoughts. She also allows herself to be heavily influenced by Sam's best friend who had helped kind of make sure her and her daughter were okay while Sam was gone um, and Peter, Sam's brother. So those two char supporting characters, Peter and Doc, the brother and best friend of Sam, kind of just kept like beating down on Annie and kind of being like, he's not the same man, he's a lot, like he's lying, he's making things up, and like he's not okay. There was no brotherly love, there was no best friend love, there was no like welcome back home, let's help you recover. Uh, there was basically zero support of Sam and the trauma that he'd experienced and every wrong move he made when trying to deal with his trauma entirely on his own he just got beaten down by his family. And then his mother, another big supporting character in this book, I couldn't tell whose side she was really on. And in, in all honesty, there should have been no sides, but that's how this book was written, is there was the side of being for Sam and the side of being against Sam. And I could never tell if she was going to uh, go to bat for Sam or if she was going to go against him and uh, especially when she was talking to Annie and I just I didn't get it like she didn't seem like she was written as a motherly character but she just did not seem like a good mother or mother-in-law and just these people who really should have welcomed Sam home and helped both Annie and Sam and all of them figure out life together were terrible and so unsupportive and just entirely lacking in every department of family and friendship love. So those are my overall thoughts, I guess. Another big thing is that Annie, it seems like she's trying to be portrayed as a character who really was uh, strong and independent while her husband was away and she really she took care of her daughter, she took care of herself, and she took care of their farm almost entirely on her own with some help um, from others. This independent woman that we hear talked about is not present in the character of Annie at all in the perspectives we read of her and uh, others observing her. Like she is actually very weak and fragile and has to be held up by others at basically every turn and I don't think she made a single decision of her own in the part of this book that I read. It was always spurred on by someone else, including Sam at times, which he was not in the right frame of mind to be doing that when he was still processing trauma. And then she was very, very hard on him. Like, I think that was encouraged by others in the book, but she definitely did make the decision to be hard on him and to not accept him and love him the way she should have. So overall, this was not a good portrayal of how you welcome home someone who has gone through PTSD. Not even welcome home, sometimes it's just you're living with someone who has gone through PTSD. And this is a terrible, terrible handbook or fictional representation of what to do with that situation. Those are my personal thoughts on it. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to continue to see five-star reviews of this book just because it is a very out there concept. Uh, there are a lot of plot lines in, not a lot, but there are a couple of plot lines in this book that I'm a little curious to see where they might go, but not enough to sit through the next 100 pages of this book. It's not worth it to me. So I'm going to set it aside until maybe one day I am really bored or I decide to give it a second shot. Or maybe one of you guys will convince me to. I would love to hear your thoughts if you have read this book and you have different opinions. I would actually really like to hear some opinions of why people think this is a good book. And I don't mind any spoilers if you do tell me why it gets better in the last hundred pages. Yeah, that's that. I'm gonna set it aside for now, but I did think I would just go ahead and share my thoughts with you guys because you seem to appreciate when I tell you why I don't like a book instead of just giving you glowing reviews all of the time, which I guess makes sense. So yeah, okay, that's that. We're gonna we're gonna stop talking for now and uh, leave leave that there. But Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, 
go ahead and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video, whatever that is. Until then, bye!